Hello, um, this is called Daniel's Makeup Tutorials, where I put my makeup on and I read a book, a chapter of a book, every Saturday at 7 p.m. So here we go. First, I put on my foundation. It's by Believe Beauty. It's called Linen because I have extremely pale skin, like a vampire, so I have to use very pale foundation. So, let's see. I add it to my forehead first. And you want to make sure it is covered, even your eyebrows, because that way when you blend later, everything is blended in and it is the same color as everything. And usually you have to put two squares of stuff on forehead so okay and now we're going now you do guess a little dot see guess a little bit and then you put it right here and right here and then you just blend it in kind of dab it and then you do this blend 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 and then that's all you do with the eyes and then you just do the same thing on the side now if you have acrylic nails like I do you want to be careful when you do around the eyes or you you know might scratch yourself or fuck yourself an eye um yeah so and then make sure you blend the eyebrows and blend the forehead like I'm doing. And if I'm looking over here, I'm actually looking at my mirror to make sure I make I have everything blended. So now we're gonna go on to the nose. You want about two dots for the nose, probably. Because you start up at the top, you go to side to side. Make sure you have these little crevices right here filled in. And um, not everyone does it, but um, I make sure these little cracks and stuff and under the nose is filled in too. But not everyone does it, so it depends on who it is. And if I have enough makeup left over on the nose, I usually start on the eyes, but you know. Right. So... Just looking over at the mirror for a minute. Okay, so now we're just going to do some stuff under the eyes. And you probably, more than likely, you're going to need two dots. Okay, now you just dab it under like this, and then you just. Most people dab it like that and then get swipe, swipe, swipe like you're making a cursive line, kind of. A cursive C. Just swipe. And then do this. <laughs> okay, and over here on this eye now. Okay. Okay, and then I don't start reading till I'm done with the foundation and concealer. If you're just wondering about that. Okay, so. See how I blended in around the eyes? On top of the eyes, the eyebrows, and the forehead. So now we're going to start from right here and go across. And when you need a pretty big load of it on your makeup sponge or brush, whichever one you use, when you're doing the cheese because it takes up a lot of concealer so yeah. okay so now I'm doing under the eyes again just make sure everything is filled in now make sure you blend it under the chin like this okay and then go back and forth back and forth back and forth just looking over at the mirror if you're wondering Okay, and let's see. Make sure you have it right here over the ears, too. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to do the other side. Pretty much the same amount. Okay, we're doing it under the eye again. Just make sure it's covered. Around the cracks right here, under, 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 back and forth, pretty much. Now you guys kind of like swipe and swipe and swipe. And I'm going to look over the mirror to make sure I get it all. Now you want to make sure you got the ear and stuff here. Okay, now we're just going to, now see, I got everything blended on the cheeks, the eyes, the forehead. We're going to do right here, by the top of the ears, right here, and right here. Sometimes you want to put the foundation on the lips, but I sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It depends on how light or bright your makeup on your lips will be. So, we're just going to do it right here, and right here. Checking in my mirror to make sure it's blended. Okay. Now we're just going to do a dot right here. And a dot right here. Make sure you blend your nose. Go to those crevices. Okay, so, you see, I got it all covered. Now, sometimes you just want to go over it all again. Now, make sure it is blended like I'm doing. Make sure you got your eyebrows, your forehead, everything really under the eyes. Like a cursive wipe, swoop, swoop, swoop. Do that at least three times. Now, we are all done with the foundation. But keep your makeup sponge out because you still have to put the concealer on. Okay. So this is concealer by Believe Beauty too. It's called Beige, which is a little darker. But concealer is always, you like want to get two shades darker than your natural skin and foundation. Because concealer is supposed to, you know, conceal things like the under eyes, puffy eyes, and stuff like that. Now, mostly, I guess, do this. See? Um, and then I get another swipe. And then I guess do this again. Okay, so. I'm going to put that down. You take your makeup sponge. Now you can, um, sorry. I know that. And now you can use the pointy end, which I always do. Or you can use this end. Or this end. Now I always use the um, pointy end to get in that little crack and corner right here. Okay, so I guess look in the mirror to make sure I blended everything. Okay, so now, after I get the concealer and stuff blended, hang on, I think I missed a spot right here. Okay, so I got the foundation and the concealer, and I always usually shape and trim my eyebrows if they need it before I start uh, the foundation, or I'll get um, foundation and makeup in my um, eyebrow trimmer. So, now I always start reading the book and then I put my other makeup on but I don't start reading the chapter of the book till I finish the foundation and the um the foundation and the concealer okay so here we go now I have the bronzer right here okay so go ahead and grab the makeup brush now this is the bronzer I use um it's called Multicolored Custom Bronzer. It is called Light Bronzer. I will list everything that I use in the bottom of the um, description. And it is made by Physician Beauty. Okay. So, you know, you want to get about 
pretty good powder on your brush. If it's like my brush, it takes a little bit to get it on there. Okay, so chapter one of The Witches of Salem. Across the wide ocean they came. European immigrants looked looking for a new beginning on American shores. Many settled in New England and Mo among these were the Puritans, an English religious sect, hoping to live and to live a simple God fearing life and to create a heaven on earth. Even before their first ship sailed for the port of the Salem town, Massachusetts. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so, um, and 1629, they had bucked the British tide for years in an effort to purify their church, banishing um, every trace of prompt and circumstance from priestly vestments of music to incense and colorful stained glass windows. Yet, with all their fine intentions, the voyagers had brought along a stowaway from their former home. A terrifying Asian idea faded to wreak havoc in their new land, for Puritans believed in the existence of entirely two different worlds. Okay, I'll turn the page and I'm done with the boundaries. See, I um, cleared up the um, brownness and this is actually gets to kind of like highlight and shape your head, your around your head and your facial features. So we are done with that. Now the next thing I usually do is the mascara. Okay, here we go. Now the mascara I use is Maybelline New York. It's called the Falsies Volume Espresso Hydro Fuse. Um, it doesn't have like a color to a uh, name of the color. It's just called New Maybelline New York the Falsies. Maybelline has to be actually the best mascara I've ever used. I've used a bunch of other ones, but I've never really used the um any but these that I really liked. So, Maybelline, I love your mascara. Okay, so, before I start, I'm going to turn the page. So, here we go. The first of these were the natural world of human beings and everything else we can see or touch or feel. But rooted deep within the Puchian souls, like some strange invasive weed, lurked their belief in a second world. An invisible world forming with their belief in a second world. Shardy of apparitions and er unearthly phantoms of the air, to be sure many spirits in the world were to be sure. The angels of the Lord, who wished was only to protect the living and offer advice in times of trouble, but the invisible world was offer Perluis too, boiling over with fire and brimstone. God's own angels and the leisure of them all was the devil, a fallen angel himself. The devil's malice was most fierce and most cunning was his way raged wagon. Let's see. The devil's malice was most fierce and most cunning when he raged his wicked wars upon God. And most fiercest. And one a fiend to the bone formed a vicious army determined to destroy everything that was good in the natural world. Among Satan's soldiers were foul-smelling souls of the dead, horrid imps of darkness cleverly disguised as animals, and a ghastly knot of demonic fallen angels who denounced the word of God, and perhaps worst of all were the devil's witches, for they could hide in the land of morals to cast their spells upon the innocent. Okay, so... We will be on page three soon. So, the next thing I start is, hang on, it's literally under the book. Um, okay. So, I use Physician's Formula Butter Collection. Um, it actually has high shadow lipstick, the bronzer, the blush, and the highlighter. Now, the next thing I usually do is, you know, I guess kind of wipe off the brush, you know, flick it around some, 
and then I put the blush on. You want to get a good amount on there. And I used to do it in a circle, but now I highlight the cheekbones. Okay, so you got that. Now we are going to use the highlight. You highlight right here, right here, and right here, mostly. You do it right here, right here. Mostly it's just right here. And if the brush is too bright, then you can put some highlight on it to dial it down. Now, so we are going to set that over here. And now, since um, it depends on actually what kind of color your clothes are. And since I'm wearing purple and pink, then I think I'm going to do probably a purple and pink together. A spectrum pink and purple. It means really bright, like pink, purple. Okay, so... The Puchins were terrified by the invisible world who hideous creatures was every bit as real to them as their own families, neighbors, and farm animals. And this one is called, um, the eye style that I'm using is called Profusion Cosmetics. It's called Spectrum. The shade of purple I'm about to use is, um, Rain. Um, okay, so you guys put it on the eyelid mostly. Like that. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take some pink right here and guess do that. And then I'm just going to actually put in the crease of the eyelid. And sometimes it will like, a little bit of shimmer will get down here, but that is okay. You can fix it really easy. And then the eyeshadow is done. And see, I did the rain purple right here, and then the pink is called rave, and it just went right in the crease right here. Okay, so. That is all done. Now we are going to add our last touch. We're going to add our lipstick, and since I'm wearing bright coloring, I think I'm going to do a bright red lipstick. This is by Neutrogena Moisture, Moisture Smooth Color Stick. The color is Classic Red. So you just start right here. I usually start right here. And then I do that. And then you do the auto and do smother it together and usually after this you'll take a like a piece of paper towel or wash rag or something and um, put it between your lips and go and it will keep it from bleeding some lipsticks actually have a non bleeding moisture to it so it doesn't bleed but that lipstick was not now I Making sure I blend it under the eyes, like right, right here with the concealer. And at the end, I finish reading the chapter of the book. So here we go. P. 
Confucian ministers preached that it was God Almighty who controlled these two worlds, and he was fearsome, vengeful, and early to displease, though purious children of the Lord might be rewarded for good behavior. Any sinners who did not obey his laws would be punished along with their entire communities. And here's a surprise, because God was all-powerful, even the devil and the demons and the witches were under his control. Satan was truly an instrument, instrument of the Lord. For it was God himself who loosened the devil's chains and allowed this horrid creature to mete out God's punishments. Now when I read this, I'm thinking, say God gave everyone free will and Satan is the one that did choose downward spiral into hell. That's why I believe, because I am a Christian. So, Anyway. The Puchins trusted that God did everything for a reason, so they took note of the things happening all around them in the belief that he was sending them signs. So they took note of the things happening all around them. And as more and more Puchins spread outward from Salem Town, Massachusetts, to build towns and to ter new territory on Indian Territory in Maine and New Hampshire, they discovered a multitude of here for horrifying signs in America, if only anyone could figure out what they meant. Earthquakes, droughts, fires, and a plague of flies ravaged the land. Fierce hurricanes swept the seas, obliterating every ship in their path. Blazing comets and shooting stars streaked across the sky. Eclipses blocked out the sun. And the colorful lights of the aurora borealis danced and whirled through the night. There was disease aplenty, deadly smallpox epidemics devastated entire populations, while malaria, yellow fever, measles, and other maladies tormented young and old alike. Two fearsome wars between the English and the Indian raged for 14 years all throughout New England, destroying farms and villages on both sides and causing terrified Puchins to flee back on the relative safety of Salem town and a nearby farming community called Salem Village. To the Puchins, every one of these signs seemed to signal God's wrath, and God's was exactly what was troubling. Reverend Samuel, Samuel Paris, the Puchin minister of Little Salem Village, it was early January 19, I mean 1692, and every member of the Paris household was shivering with cold. Each night, the water inside the house would turn to solid ice as a shrieking wind howled on it, whistling through cracks in their walls and floorboards. Reverend Paris was extremely upset, and there were three reasons why. First was the firewoods promised in his contract with Salem Village Church. There was hardly any left. Second was promised pay there wasn't any. A church committee of wealthy merchants and landholders in Salem Village disapproved of Reverend Paris and had just voted down a tax that was supposed to provide the money. Paris was enraged and began making fiery sermons thundering from his pulpit, pulpit that these wicked and reprobate men had joined forces with the devil to destroy the Persian religion and all that it stood for. Here are but two parties in the world, Paris proclaimed, the Lamb and his followers, and the Dragon and his followers. Everyone is on one side or another. Now, I guess to clarify, the Lamb and his followers was God and the Christian people and their religions and the good people that weren't sinners. And the Dragon and his followers was the devil, Satan, and the witches. Because they believed that the witches were instruments using, and the devil used using them to, guess, destroy the good sinner's land and not be good and stuff. And guess, destroy the land and everything. Okay. But the third reason was by far the worst of all. Something was terribly wrong with the Reverend's nine-year-old daughter, Betty and his orphan 11-year-old niece, Abigail Williams. Normally, the Paris household would have been a hive of activity filled with eight hardworking people besides Paris. But, whoever who was forever setting beneath his map in the world yet to write, sorry. Sorry. 
Sorry about that. Um, from the time they're about four to five years old, so when they were chores to do, and there was always chores to do, except on Sunday when everyone was in church, the two girls might have knit some warm socks, boiled laundry in their enormous fireplace, flipped ashes off the floors, ladled out porridge for breakfast, or helped make a wild venison pie and some fleet pudding for lunch in their big iron cooking pot. When all of this was work, this work was done, they could cart some wool or linen, twist its fibers into yarn or a wooden spindle, mend torn breeches, or even upholster a chair. Of course, they would spend some time studying the Bible and saying their prayers, and as if they ever took a break, they might sip some pear or apple cider from large pewter cups. That, But that's not what happened on one freezing day in January 1692. Not at all, for as winter's sleet and snow heaped higher and higher outside the door, Betty and Abigail began to twitch and choke and comfort their bodies into strange and normal shapes, crouched beneath the furniture and speaking words that made no sense. And that's the end of chapter two. So chapter, I mean chapter one. And chapter two will start next Saturday when I film at 7 p.m. Have a good day, and I hope you like the video.